Hello and welcome. Um, thank you for that introduction, Wendy. I'm Sophie Sherwood and I'm here to talk about chemigrams. So I'm just going to share my screen with you and I will be referring to my notes. So I'm sorry if I don't look in the camera as often as I should. Um, okay, so this is one of my first chemigrams I did using Darkroom Developer, Fix and Vaseline. A lot of my chemogram work involves putting resists onto light sensitive photographic paper whilst out in the daylight. So I did this in my garden and I apply dark green chemistry after doing this. And the pink and blue parts of the image come from the light sensitive paper being exposed to light. But these areas are not processed by the chemistry because the Vaseline is blocking this from happening. You can also see these kinds of colours happening when you try lumen printing. A good way to test colours you're going to get with a chemogram might be to um, get a new piece of paper and do a lumen which is exposing the paper in sunlight or um, yeah just exposing it in sunlight with an object on top for around five or ten minutes with a plant um, or you know whatever you want to do it with. Um, it depends on the strength of the sunlight for how long you have to do it for um, and you can put it in a photo frame to make it really flat against the paper. So Wendy's made a resource on this process. We did it in our sun printing um, lesson which was a couple of months ago and you can use any light sensitive paper with chemogram but you have to be mindful about the absorbency and the kind of resist you're using if that's the route you want to take. So for instance, fibre-based paper will be more absorbent than resin coated. Okay, so this is me in full swing during a workshop. And I've given workshops in chemograms with organisations like um, Bristol Folk House and Bristol Charity 125. I sometimes use an ink block with Vaseline to give another option for printmaking during my workshops. And this means you can create monoprints. So you put the light sensitive paper emulsion side down so it's in contact with the Vaseline on the printing block and you draw on the back of this. You have to be careful about writing words backwards if they if you do use words for that though um, so that they come out the right way and using Vaseline with the chemogram process means that you can apply a lot of different printing techniques like this that you would normally use with things like printing inks. So Pierre Cordier, uh, a Belgian artist, is cited as being the founder of the chemogram process in the 50s. But um, as you can see here, the artist Dora Ma has used this and this was actually made in 1936. Um, and I went to see her retrospective at the Tate Modern earlier this year and yeah, it was just amazing. And you can clearly see in the right hand picture that she's used brush marks and there's also some mottling in both of the images, which suggests that um, it wasn't completely washed in the chemistry as you would normally do in the dark room. And the irregularity of the background shows that mottling effect. Um, and we've also got in the left hand picture um, some uh, photograms um, happening in the top. So I think they're made with glass um, tumblers on top of the paper. So you can layer these processes up, you can have photograms on top of images, but then you can also bring in the chemogram technique into that as well. Um, so Dora Ma started working commercially at first, but soon found a Serena streak, excuse my cat, sorry. Um, and yeah, towards the end of her life, she had a relationship with Picasso and she began to make abstract paintings. And this piece is from the 80s, um, although it isn't stated. I'm pretty sure that this is a chemogram and you've got the two blobs as blue ink in the middle. Um, so yeah, very abstract. And then on to Pierre Cordier's work. And as you can see, there's a good range of tones and, and there's that really gorgeous purple there. I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure on how he did it, but I would imagine that he worked in stages and covering different sections of the paper using various different resists. Um, one thing you can use on paper is varnish and lacquer. 
If you're going to use a lot of different resists, then it's a good idea to keep your chemistry separate in their own containers for each resist that you use. So you would have, um, for instance, developer that you'd use with Vaseline and developer that you would use with Vaseline, uh, sorry, not Vaseline, lacquer. Um, so you'd keep those separate so that there wasn't any cross contamination. And then that would mean that the chemistry wouldn't exhaust as fast as well. Mm -hmm. And so his, his work often draws on music and likens the process to jazz. Uh, a lot of his work has patterns and geometric, uh, geometric shapes in them, using the process very precisely, which is not like my approach. Um, I'm much more free and experimental, as I'm sure you're aware, by looking at the difference between my work and his. Um, and you can use a number of different resists on paper, like I've said before. So you can also use, as well as varnishes, um, things like syrups and oils, um, but you can also use sellotape. So something as precise as this could have been done with something like sellotape. I'm not sure if that is what he did, but it's possible. Um, and it's basically anything that creates a barrier on the paper that will work. And Elizabeth was one of the first people I taught at Bristol Folk House. She came on the course to discover a way in which she could create um, destroyed images of woodland to highlight the environmental impact humans have on the landscape. Um, so what she's done here is a chemilumen, which means that she uses a transparency on top of the paper to create a lumen print by exposing this in sunlight. And then what she did is she went on to experiment with darkroom chemistry on top of the paper to get the effect that you see here. And the burnt colours that you see on the paper is from mixing developer and fix together. This will create ammonia, so just be mindful of that. If you want to experiment with this, then you should do it outside or in a well-ventilated room. This is a piece by Janelle Young. It's called Capturing the Infinity of the Sea or Field. And she used a technique reminiscent of the ink blot or Rorkshack test um, by putting chemistry on light sensitive paper and folding it in half and grouping them together as a whole piece. And here's a close up. So you can see the fold marks in the paper just faintly there, how she got that um, particular um, technique. And this is just a, an example of a very straightforward way of using chemogram. So you can literally just put developer onto paper and then fix it afterwards and you just get a black and white image. Okay, so Hannah Fletcher is an artist who uses plant-based chemistry to experiment with light sensitive materials and she also taught me how to develop film using plants from my garden. So I've done a video on this process over on the YouTube channel, um, the Real Photography Company YouTube channel, where I use my potato plant to make a developer and that's using vitamin C and soda crystals, otherwise known as ascorbic acid and sodium carbonate. And other homemade chemistry can be made out of bodily fluids such as urine, so you can actually fix film in your own urine if you wish. I haven't got around to doing this yet, but um, I'm sure that it is very interesting and very successful. Um, I, apparently they used to do this in the war as well. Um, so I'm pretty sure this is bird poo on paper here, um, so it's a very different type of chemogram as you can see. Um, but yeah, it's definitely uh, photographic paper that she's used there. And I'll use, I'll um, uh, share the uh, recipe for the plant-based developer in another slide. So uh, this is Pete Webb and he's a Bristol based artist who uses the chemogram technique to make surreal landscapes. His technique is to dip light sensitive materials in chemistry and slowly submerge them over time. This sometimes uh, takes more than 10 minutes and he, yeah, he's very meticulous with this process. And this I think is from a series about asteroids. Um, and yeah, they're very abstract depictions of uh, things like distant hills or other worlds. And here's what you'll need to do the chemograms at home. This is the basic darkroom kit. 
Um, so like I said before, you can use a homemade developer and I will share this recipe with you on the next slide. But if you're just looking for a quick fix, then using commercial darkroom chemistry is fine. Um, please remember to recycle them after you've used them. You can either take them to a household recycling center or if you have a local dark room, you can, you know, take it there. That's very annoying. Sorry about the noise in the background, if you can hear that. Um, so here's the plant recipe. If you're using plant matter, you won't need to mix soda crystals with the tap water in the first part of the recipe. Um, just add it straight to the water once you've steeped the plant and strained it. You can pour the chemistry down the drain if you dilute it. So keep the tap running when you, you pour it down the sink, basically. And use fix as normal with this um, if you want to. And you can um, actually develop films with this. So it's not just um, with things like um, chemograms. You can actually process a film with this. And I highly recommend being shown how to make it by Hannah Fletcher, which is where it's come from. Um, on her website, she's got more information on how to book a workshop with her. And she's very reasonably priced um, and very knowledgeable about different plants that you can use and how you can adapt the recipe. And here's a, an image from a roll of 35 millimeter Ilford HP5 that I processed using a developing tank at home. And that's with the plant based recipe. I cut down my potato plant to make this and used the leaves with the steeping technique in the, that was written down in that um, previous recipe there. Um, and you'll need a change bag or a dark room to do this at home and a developing tank. So, um, you know, it's not necessarily that accessible to everyone at home, but I just thought I'd show you all of the possibilities with this um, recipe. And this is the Caffinol recipe from caffinol.org. Um, so you can process films with this recipe too, but also use it at home using the chemogram technique. And I'm now going to use this recipe on a piece of light sensitive paper. Do, 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 do. Transition. So I will be doing that demonstration. It's very annoying all of this noise, isn't it? Yeah, I wish it would shut up. Mickey. <laughs> So now on to phytograms and the phytogram technique was invented by Carol Doing and it's similar to chemogram process so it, I would actually class it as chemogram process but it's slightly different and it's much more simplistic as it only requires soda crystals, vitamin C and water and this solution is then applied to the plants which are then placed on top of light sensitive photographic film, which is then fixed as normal. So you use normal um, darkroom fix with this. And this means that you can reproduce the images again and again. And you can also use the solution with photographic paper, just like the chemogram process, which I will show you next. So there we go. This is a multi-layered collage using different leaves. Um, and the different, in sh different shades and colour are happening because of the time it takes to place the leaves on the paper as the paper exposes to sunlight. And he's a dedicated artist wanting to bridge the gap between humans and plants, making people more aware of their wonder and what you can do with them to better our well-being. So that's the main reason why he developed the phytogram technique. Other than using plants, you can also use objects with this process. And this is one I tried by dunking my hand in the mixture and putting it on a 5-4 sheet film. Because soda crystals are a cleaning product, I wouldn't advise doing this for a prolonged period of time. Um, just a minute or so will probably do. And then just putting it on the, the, um, the film for about five minutes, let's say. And this process is really good at getting finer details of things like plant matter. So you could see the, the veins in the leaves, but here you can also see the creases in my hand really well. So it's, it's a really detailed process. And this print was made using tinsel. Um, so I've been scanning all of these in um, using my negative scanner at home. I have an Ilf, uh, sorry, not Ilford, an Epson D700. 
Um, but you don't need to use a, a negative scanner. You can also um, put these in uh, double glass frames, which you can get from Tiger at the moment. So not expensive. And yeah, I think those size frames would fit a 5.4 piece of film if you wanted to experiment with that. Um, and so as you can see on this one, uh, some of the colour from the tinsel has bled into the emulsion and stained it. So it's turned it a bit green because the tinsel was purple. And so you're not limited to plant matter with this process or with the chemogram process either, although it's definitely more environmentally friendly and gets kids involved with nature around them more. So yeah, this is much more environmentally friendly in that it, you can get those products from things like chemists. You can also get soda crystals from Wilkinson's. So it's, it's very accessible. You don't have to go to, um, you know, Jessup's or does Jessup's even exist anymore? I don't know. Um, but yeah, just like you don't have to go to a dark room shop or a specialist shop to buy this um, chemistry. Again, sorry about the noise, if you can hear that noise. Um, so Dan Herrera has recently started experimenting with the phytogram by mixing these with um, cyanotype on top of the paper. And he doesn't always fix his images either. So that means that they'll continue to change and often end up as a dark brown, which you can sort of see happening in um, the sort of more fluid areas of the picture. And this is done with Japanese maple leaves. Uh, he recently did an Instagram takeover with us as well. So if you want to go and have a look, it's at Real Photography Company. And here's the phytogram recipe. I've adapted this slightly so you can make a smaller batch because on Carol's blog, um, he actually quotes making a whole litre, which I don't feel would be um, necessary. It depends on whether you want to fill a whole tray, basically. Um, I've been using takeaway containers, which is about the right amount. And you can use a paintbrush to um, put the mixture onto different objects if you want. So you don't actually have to dip them in. You can use different application methods. Um, so it, it also depends on how many prints you want to make as well. I've had um, 250 millilitres last me a long time and I've also made several body prints using that. And the solution I've talked about in this presentation can be kept in the fridge in an airtight container for further use up to around a week. So that's both of those um, chemical recipes that I shared, the plant-based uh, developer recipe and also the caffeinol recipe and the phytogram recipe as well. So thank you for listening. Um, and what I'll do is I'll put a list of links um, for people that I've talked about in the chat for convenience or someone else will do it as I'm not um, currently available. And another site I'd uh, highly recommend is alternativephotography.com. And that's where you can just dive into hundreds of different alternative photographic processes. And I'm now gonna do a brief practical and then we'll do questions with Ruth. And that's the end.